Okay, hi, I'm Mike Lowe. Uh, I work on the Jetstream project at Indiana University. And uh, we've done something a bit weird. Uh, so we've, uh, we've gotten rid of layer two networking in this deployment. Uh, we've done that with, uh, by using BGP. So if you'll, uh, I think the best way to show this is just to sort of have you follow along as I type and, uh, and kind of, I'll explain what's going on. Uh, we're on a compute node right now. We're in the, uh, there's two, uh, there's two, uh, Melmax connect X5 NICs in this thing. There they are sitting there. Uh, so if we, uh, you need to note those E3 and E4, because that's going to pop up a bunch later. So if you look at the routes on this thing, uh, we've got dozens and dozens and dozens of routes. And you can see that they all come in over BGP. Uh, let's see. We use the uh, free range routing, formerly known as Quagga, to uh, to do all of this. And uh, this is not uh, not particularly unusual. Uh, you can find this in places. But you slap the address you want on the loopback, bring up the two NICs without IP addresses, set up a BGP router. And more or less, that is sufficient uh, so long as you uh, redistribute some of the, uh, let's see, yeah. So long as you redistribute uh, your connected interfaces right here, right? That is enough to get this node up. So that's not particularly uh, unusual or special. Uh, but that's just one piece of the puzzle. So when we, uh, Uh, what was that? Um, maybe Newton that started using service types for subnets. I'd never used those before until now. Because what I needed to do uh, was conserve my routable floating my routable IP addresses for floating IPs. And the traditional way, um, when you use DVR and you have floating IP addresses, that your compute nodes all burn a routable IP address, and that's unacceptable. I've got uh, I figure I'll run 1500 VMs and have 500, uh, 500 compute nodes. So giving up a third of my IP addresses for, for compute nodes just to sit there is not, that's not acceptable. So what we've done is we've used this service type on the public network. So all of the, um, all of the floating IP gateways are going to land off in this CIDR block. And if we look at this guy, one of the other subnets on the public network, it'll catch, due to the service type, it'll catch the floating IP and the centralized SNAT gateway that you have on your network node. OK, so we've got that piece. Uh, let's see. All right. So if you aren't familiar with the operation of DDR, it, uh, it breaks up the classic single uh, network namespace that's on the network node into a bunch of different pieces. The compute nodes all get two. Right. So you get a floating IP gateway network namespace. And you get the router namespace. And what happens when you assign a floating IP is this router will do the um, source natting and dump it off into that floating IP uh, network namespace. So the way that's normally supposed to work is you're supposed to have a, uh, a flat network that you plug that uh, 
floating IP into, and there's some router off somewhere, a real one, and it all just works. We don't have any of that. There is no layer two. So we have to tell lies, and uh, the big lie is right here. So every single compute node, uh, this provider bridge winds up with the same gateway address because we don't care about east-west traffic. These guys are never going to talk amongst themselves. We only want them to shovel north-south traffic off into the fabric. So we can just tell lies, and put them all on the same site, or give them all the same uh, IP address, and nobody's the wiser, right? Uh, let's see. So, uh, yeah, that's all, that's all relatively normal. Everything's in the, this, uh, this all works the way, uh, the way it's supposed to, according to the documentation, right? So outbound traffic goes out through the compute node, but what the docs say is that when you do this DVR, all of your inbound traffic from the world comes in through the network node. And I don't find that acceptable. So uh, I, I changed it. Uh, so what, what we did was we took advantage of a feature of free range routing. You can redistribute any route into BGP that the kernel is aware of. So if you IP route add something, it'll just get published into BGP. Um, right, we can, we can find this right here. It was added. That is one of my floating IPs. It's a static route. So uh, on this node, it's static. Everywhere else, it shows up as a BGP route. So we get all the traffic destined to this guy, gets grabbed by the network fabric, and shoved onto here. This guy knows what to do with it. It'll put it right into the floating IP network namespace. It knows what to do with it. It routes all the way in. So uh, that behavior is not normal. And that is what I patched to make all this go. Uh, and there's my, you know, well, if you take out the debugging, it's a, uh, it's like a four line patch. All it does is add a wrap. Uh, when the floating IP is assigned, and then remove it when it's gone. So, uh, let's just go ahead and start pinging it here from my laptop here, a couple miles away. And if we, um, Yank that. Assuming, uh, no. Assuming there's that typo. Try server remove floating IP. There we go. Thank you. Okay. Ping stop. This appears there. No route from the kernel. Add it back, gets published out to the world. This is this ping is 
through Comcast, through the commodity internet, up through Chicago, back all the way down. And we should see that route show up there. Uh, so. So the, uh, the major motivation to do this is with Manila and native CFFS, we want all of these, uh, all these virtual machines to have full bandwidth or at least as much as they can get to the storage cluster. So that's, that's our major motivation for trying to cut out the network node to the degree possible. Uh, I don't happen to have something that does full bandwidth assuming they're running iperf, but at a minimum I've got, uh, I've got a 10 gig real host sitting on the other side of the machine room and with protocol overhead, it runs clean at 10 gig to a single, this is a single virtual core. So not, uh, not bad. It's untuned. You know, this is just brought it up, ran iperf. So, uh, yeah. Any, uh, any questions?